everyone uh, today we will be solving the problem find the minimum number of minimum area to cover all ones from the weekly contest 403 so if you haven't tried this problem yet please go and give it a try for at least 20 minutes so after that you can come and watch the video solution so if you I mean if you are unable to solve this don't worry because if you solve similar problems like three to four similar problems then the patterns will be formed in your brain so that if this problem similar problem comes in the next contest you will be definitely able to solve so in this problem we will discuss the question clear clearly then we will see the different approaches to solve the problem so first let's understand the problem clearly here you are given a 2d binary array grid Find a rectangle with horizontal and vertical sides with the smallest area, with the smallest area such that all ones in the grid lie inside the rectangle. He is saying that we need to find a rectangle with horizontal and vertical sides such that all my ones right inside the rectangle there will be ones and zeros, but all my ones should present in my rectangle, in my this vertical, in in this uh, sorry this horizontal and vertical sides all my ones. So let's see, let's see this, uh, let's see this. So if you are seeing this one, one, one. So if you take this rectangle, so all my ones are present. So here is saying minimum possible area. You'll say if it is saying maximum, right? You can directly take whole rectangle. It's simple. If you are taking maximum, I will take from start and I will go for the end. So this is my rectangle. I will do length into breadth, length into breadth. This is my area as simple as that, but he's saying the minimum possible. Now if you see here, we have only one in this area, so it will be only one. Now here we are going in strength 1000, so let's let's see how you can solve this. Now consider this is my uh, matrix, consider this is my matrix and here my ones are 1, 1, 1, 1, all, all are my this ones. So if you observe, so this will be my area, right? This will be my area in this. So how how you are able to determine this is my area? So first you are seeing is left side, left side you need to find the first one, left side you need to find the first one. This is my first observation and if you are coming from the left, this side, if you are coming from this direction, you need to find the first one, first one and if you are coming from the down, you need to find the first one, from the down, from the top same thing, my first one, okay, uh, as of now it's looking good, now let's see this, so if you see this, my area will be this one right my area will be this my area will be this and if your area is this now from top from down this is your first one from this side this is your first one if you're coming from this side this is gonna be my first one and if you're coming from the top this is gonna be first one now what i will do is from the top I will come, from the top I will come, I will iterate every element, I will iterate every element and I will check whether I am encountering one. If I am encountering one, that's, that will be my, uh, this value, like top value, let's consider it as top value and then I will come from the left, like this I will iterate and this will be my left and from the bottom I will come, from the bottom I will come, when I will encounter first one I will break it out, so my bottom and from the right so it will be my right so these are all values i will calculate after calculating this this is my top this is my bottom this is my left and this is my right right so if you observe b minus t plus 1 will give this area into right minus l plus 1 will give this area length so multiplying these two will give you area right multiplying these two will give area as simple as that first we will see the first approach first what i will do i will iterate every row every iterate every row and i will check my for first one so it's simple first i am taking r1 r1 means top r2 means bottom uh, column 1 means left and c2 means right so first i is equals 0 i less than n j is equals to 0 j less than m when i first encounter one while iterating first i encounter one i will directly store in r1 I will store in R1. Then same thing I will do for C1. I will iterate in the column wise. In the column wise, that I will store in C1. Then from the bottom, so you can see I is equal to n minus one. Then in R2. Then in C2. After getting this, we are calculating the R and C, and directly we are returning the R into C. So this is my 
first approach i think you have got it what exactly you are doing now if you observe now if you observe so while we are iterating right while we are iterating we are storing this as my minimum r1 this r1 as my minimum and this r2 will be my maximum because we are coming from the top and we are coming from the bottom we want only these two elements we want only these two elements so can i do can i do r1 r1 equals to minimum i will store in r2 i will store the maximum instead of writing four loops i will try to make it r1 and r2 same thing i will see with c so for c also we are coming from the left side this will be my c1 and i am coming from the right side i will come coming from the right side this is my c1 and this is my c2 this is my minimum and this is my maximum in this case this is my minimum and this is my maximum as simple as that we have written four loops then we have optimized it into a single loop now if you see here this will be my solution so r1 i will store into max because i want to store my maximum value sorry minimum value that's why we are storing it as min to minimum from in c1 i want to store minimum so into max r2 i want to store the maximum value so it will be into minimum and same with c2 will iterate when it is 1 r1 equals to minimum of r1 comma i r2 comma i c1 c1 comma j c2 comma j finally we are doing the same thing what we which we have did here so same thing we have done so it is taking order of n and it is taking order of 4n so this is how you need to optimize during the interviews you can't directly think about this approach because yeah you can think once you are good at programming then you can think but if you are new to new or if you are intermediate as well you need to solve in this way then you can come and you can solve in this way so i think you have got it what exactly we are doing i think you have learned something new from this video if you learned something new from this video please do like and if you are new to the, new to the channel please consider to subscribe i will see you in the next video till then bye bye